Now to Dr. Dina Spingarn, who earned her PhD in English at Harvard, and so we would consider you truly a language expert. So we're looking for your insight on our topic today. Dr. Spingarn. Uh, good morning. Thank you to the Josiah Henson Campaign Committee and Montgomery Community Media for inviting me to be here today. I'm really delighted to be part of a conference that recognizes Josiah Henson's important place in American history. As all of us gathered here today now know, Harriet Beecher Stowe cited Josiah Henson as her inspiration for Uncle Tom, the hero of her history-changing 1852 novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Today, of course, being an Uncle Tom means being a hat in hand, submissive race trader, something no one wants to be. So it might seem that the association with Uncle Tom would be a potential challenge for an institution dedicated to Josiah Henson, a challenge that should be quickly surmounted by making sure that museum goers know that both Stowe's Uncle Tom and Henson himself were actually selfless, courageous leaders. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about how the Christ-like Uncle Tom of Stowe's novel became the deplorable race traitor the name connotes today, as well as how this figure has helped Americans, black and white, engage with the legacy of slavery. That's the subject of my first book, which I'm just about to complete. It's actually due to my publisher on July 1st, <laughs> uh, so, so I'm, I'm uh, really nearing the end there. Um, so. First, I should say a word about the character of Uncle Tom and Uncle Tom's cabin. In Stowe's novel, Uncle Tom is a deeply Christian man who is confident in himself even as he is humble before God. While he will not escape from slavery himself nor engage in violence, his humility does not stop him from encouraging a fellow slave to escape with her son, nor from asserting himself verbally, especially when it comes to his Christian faith and to protecting others. Now, in the eyes of many 19th century African Americans, Uncle Tom was a selfless character whose Christ-like submission merited respect, even if not for some emulation as a protest strategy. Frederick Douglass, for example, rejected this character as a personal example, but he also expressed appreciation for him in his autobiographies. To Douglass, as to many other black activists of his time, the community was enriched both by those like Uncle Tom, who survived by religious faith, and by those who survived by more aggressive resistance. One could disagree with Uncle Tom's patient, self-sacrificing Christianity, but one could not deny its fundamental role in the survival of the race. Given Uncle Tom's meaning during the mid-19th century, it should be no surprise that Josiah Henson himself took up the association with Uncle Tom's cabin and ran with it. After Stowe's novel was published in 1852, he revised and reprinted his previously published autobiography, retitling it Truth is Stranger Than Fiction in 1858, and then came out with an additional extended version, Uncle Tom's Story of His Life in 1877. He also made tours of the United States and England as the real Uncle Tom and the original Uncle Tom for the rest of his life. In the, advertis in the advertisements for his tours and for his book, uh, Uncle Tom's name got more prominent billing than his own. In Henson's third autobiography, he wrote of his pride in his association with Stowe's character and, and with a novel that had been so transformational in American history. And he claimed many people he knew as the examples for characters um, in Stowe's novel. How then did Uncle Tom get such a bad reputation? To answer this question, we have to look back to the publication of Uncle Tom's Cabin in 1852. Stowe's novel was the best-selling book of the 19th century after the Bible. It sold 300,000 copies in the United States in its first year alone, and a million copies between the United States and Britain. It was a sensation all over the world, translated into more than a dozen languages. It was really just all over the place, and, and really the first American book to make such a huge international splash. Now, it's difficult for us today to recognize just how revolutionary this novel was in American culture. Slave narratives published before Uncle Tom's Cabin, including Henson's own, 
gave white readers a chance to consider the inhumanity of slavery and the humanity of African Americans. But these sold in limited numbers and generally to readers who already held abolitionist sympathies. Stowe's best-selling novel was different. It introduced hundreds of thousands of readers, uh, millions all over the world, to understand how cruel the institution of slavery really was. And it showed that slaves were human beings with deep feelings and precious souls. Readers from every walk of life who probably had never encountered a black character in a novel in their lives in any kind of major role, they wept in sympathy for the cruel plight of Uncle Tom and his fellow slave, Eliza. Now, from the moment Uncle Tom's Cabin entered American culture, it inspired wave upon wave of political and material responses. Writers, artists, and business people adapted Stowe's work in virtually every medium, from theater to card games. It's kind of like contemporary merchandising for, for something that's a big hit. Everyone wants to make products connected to it. As many Americans as read the novel, many more went to the theater to see one and often more of the many dramatizations of Uncle Tom's Cabin. These plays, too, were part of the anti-slavery influence of Stowe's novel. At the same time, however, Southern whites protested that Stowe's book got both the institution of slavery and the character of slaves entirely wrong. They insisted that such horrors never or rarely happened and that no black man could ever be as virtuous as Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom's Cabin played a crucial role in bringing about the Civil War and the abolition of slavery. Even Abraham Lincoln acknowledged this influence. There's a, a famous story that when Lincoln met Stowe in the White House, he said, so this is the little lady who wrote the book that started this great war. Now, it's not clear whether or not he actually said that, but it was, in fact, a sentiment that many Americans, black and white, all over the nation, across the political spectrum, shared. Many, many people believed that Stowe's novel was a fundamental impetus for the Civil War. Now, some people uh, thought that that was a problem, and other people celebrated that. Now, the novel's political impact also reached far beyond the issue of slavery to the very humanity of African Americans. In an era in which slaves counted as three-fifths of a person and could not testify in a trial, among other uh, lack of rights, an era when the superiority of Anglo-Saxons over Africans was widely considered a fact, even in the scientific community, Uncle Tom was the first humanized, even glorified, representation of a black person that many whites had encountered. Because of this, Stowe's hero became the center of the first major national conversation, not only about slavery, but also about black character. Now, in the past, scholars have assumed that Uncle Tom became a derogatory figure in the many dramatic adaptations of Uncle Tom's Cabin that appeared on American stages. However, as my research has shown, uh, the figure's derogatory meaning did not, in fact, emerge in the theater. Well into the Jim Crow era, black audiences actually received the Uncle Tom's Cabin dramas as works with radical political potential. Uh, and, and in fact, well, also well into the 20th century, there were uh, states and cities in the United States that refused to let Uncle Tom's Cabin plays or films show in theaters. The truth is, the transformation of Uncle Tom is as complicated as is the history of race in America. Even once the Civil War settled the issue of slavery's legality, the institution's legacy remained open for discussion as did the fate of the four million newly freed African Americans. Thanks to the continued popularity of Stowe's novel, as well as its many adaptations for the stage, Uncle Tom's Cabin remained the nation's most visible image of slavery, and Uncle Tom the most famous slave. Stowe's novel and the many adaptations it inspired served as a central, ever-contested site for the nation's continuing debates about the memory of slavery, the meaning of the Civil War, and the future of American race relations. Stowe's novel and its characters did not just influence how whites saw blacks, but also, as I'd like to suggest, how black folks saw themselves and their history. In the late 19th century, uh, and, and really sometimes even today, 
both blacks and whites often called the era of slavery the days of Uncle Tom. And Uncle Tom generally signified an antebellum slave. This lasting slave status was fundamental to his transformation into a derogatory slur. Uh, slur. As a perpetual slave, Uncle Tom held an increasingly fraught meaning for African Americans over the course of the 19th century. On one hand, Uncle Tom's cabin deserved praise for its virtually unquestioned role in the abolition of American chattel slavery and for its path-breaking portrayal of black dignity, emotion, and virtue. On the other hand, the hardening of Jim Crow at the turn of the century meant that conditions had not improved nearly as much as they should have. Amid the South's pervasive arguments that black Americans were unfit for civil rights, its increasing legal and extra-legal efforts to create a socioeconomic order as close as possible to slavery and Northern assent to these attitudes and policies, there was a powerful onus for African Americans to prove just how far from the days of Uncle Tom and from Uncle Tom himself the race had progressed. While African American protests against Uncle Tom's cabin itself would not arise until the late 1930s, and I'd be happy to say more about that in the question and answer period, Uncle Tom's pejorative meaning developed during the 1910s as a new generation of African Americans struggled against the race's old political attitudes and strategies. This negative meaning developed through associa association not just with the meekness of Stowe's character, uh, but more importantly, with a fraught slavery past to which succeeding generations of African Americans negotiated complex and shifting relationships. By the 1920s, aided by demographic, educational, and cultural shifts that increased intraracial tensions, calling someone an Uncle Tom was an unmistakable slur. It became an entrenched part of African American political rhetoric, deployed to criticize those whose attitude or behavior worked contrary to the race's progress. Calling out Uncle Tom's was a way to reject the legacy of slavery and insist that a new kind of leadership was the key to progress. We are still, of course, wrestling with the legacy of slavery. It is for that reason, I think, that the term Uncle Tom remains so controversial and is still used. It is also why telling the story of Josiah Henson is so important. Thank you.